One word could easily describe the start of last season for LSU. Strange. That's right, it was strange because remember, you know, they started the year ranked fifth in the country, went to Green Bay to play Wisconsin and LSU down by two, was driving late, was getting in the field goal range, only to have Brandon Harris throw an interception. Tigers lost and were never ranked that high again. Then three weeks later, against Auburn, looked like LSU had pulled off a miracle with a touchdown in the final play of the game, but it got reversed two just minutes later when replay showed that LSU did not get the snap off in time. Time had already expired before the snap and thus reversed the call, and Auburn won the game. LSU lost and also, too, would lose their head coach in less miles. LSU fired him shortly after. Ed Orgeron became the interim head coach and didn't do too bad the rest of the way. Five and two over his last seven regular season games. The only two losses were close ones, losing to Florida by six and losing by ten to Alabama. You know, no shame in that. Almost two months to the day that Orgeron was hired as interim head coach in late November, LSU named Ed the permanent head coach. And after that, yeah, the bowl game, LSU looked pretty good. They not only beat Louisville in convincing fashion, but held that high-powered Cardinals offense and Heisman Trophy winner Lamar Jackson to a mere nine points. So LSU, they always get terrific recruiting classes, if not in the top five, top ten in this past year, no exception at all. So the talent is there, and they've got some players back on both sides of the ball to try to improve from last year's eight and four season. Offensively, we got to start with one major addition, and that is the offensive coordinator in Matt Canada, responsible for Pittsburgh's terrific offenses, the Panthers. You might remember, you know, last year they scored a ton of points against both Penn State and against Clemson and won both games. And, of course, we know what type of seasons Penn State and Clemson had a year ago. So Canada, hired by LSU, 1.5 mil per year, and he hopes to make LSU's offense, well, unpredictable because that was one of the big raps against LSU um, under Les Miles, who I know did a lot of good things at Baton Rouge, but the power eye offense, we had heard that you know LSU was just an ordinary offense, like they were predictable playing right into the defense's hands. Well, a little more creativity, it looks like, will be implemented in this type of offense by Matt Canada. You're going to see LSU um, regularly run what they call pre-snap shifts. In other words, you're going to see, um, you know, uh, examples like the receiver going in motion from right to left, then left to right, or vice versa before the snap. You're going to see the tight end chain sides. And then after the ball is snapped, there will be times as well where you're going to see some jet sweeps. So this is going to be a different looking LSU offense as far as formations, as far as style, as far as scheme. And that might be just what the doctor ordered for the Tigers. Remember last year, LSU in terms of total offense, well, last year, fifth worst in the SEC as far as points scored. Uh, matter of fact, they only scored 28 points per game, fifth worst in the conference. So maybe a different philosophy uh, could lead to improvement for Louisiana State. And talking about the offense, talking about one hell of a running back in Darius Geis, one of the best to come back this season. Um, probably going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate. You'll hear his name all year long as long as he can put up the stats that he put up last year. Remember, um, he played a lot because Leonard Fournette, who only played – I think like seven games last year because of the ankle problems. Geis was able to pick up the slack. In fact, led the SEC in rushing with almost 1,400 yards on the ground and had 15 touchdowns. And at quarterback, Danny Etling, this guy took over um, early in the year because of the struggles of Brandon Harris, who now is at North Carolina. He transferred to Tar Heel Country. But Etling, this is his offense now. Stats were modest, 11 touchdowns, only five picks, and threw for a little over 2,000 yards. But now this is his starting job and no longer has to worry about fighting off Brandon Harris for the starting position. Receiving-wise, this is going to be a scary area for the Tigers because they lost five of their top six wideouts, including uh, Trayvon Doral and Malachi Dupree. But on the other hand, you know something, LSU's passing game a year ago wasn't all that great anyway. In fact, it didn't even rank in the top 100 in passing offense nationwide. So, again, maybe the addition of Matt Canada uh, with all things related to what the offense can do, especially passing, maybe that's what they needed, a resurgence there. So, DJ Chirk, he's the leading returning receiver, only caught 26 passes a year ago, but had about 500 yards receiving and three scores. You'll also bring in uh, Drake Davis, 
whom last year as a freshman uh, played in six games but didn't start. And uh, you'll also have uh, Russell Gage, who is a senior and has started four times. And let's chit-chat about the offensive line. They do return some experience, including Will Clapp, probably the best of the bunch on the line. Last season, coaches, all SEC first team, but they'll move him to the center position. That's because Ethan Posage was a second-round draft pick by the Seahawks. The guards, least amount of experience for the Tigers, and it didn't help that Maya Tahuma has now left. The LSU granted him his transfer release just recently in early August. So at left guard, Grandin Brumfield, now a junior, played all 12 games last year but didn't start. And at right guard, you have Donovan Campbell, whom last year as a freshman played in four games. A little better feeling, though, at left tackle, the mailman, Carl Malone's son, that's K.J. Malone, now enters his senior year at left tackle. And at right tackle, not as much experience with Toby Weathersby, who has only had four career starts. He's a junior. And at tight end, you got the very tall Foster Morrow, 6'6", 255, has started in four games so far in his collegiate career. Dave Aranda's defense in 2016 dominated for the Tigers. We're talking about a top 10 defense overall, massing 36 sacks and only giving up 16 points per game, which was sixth best in the country. But with a terrific defense, you have to worry about losing personnel, and LSU will have a lot of bodies to replace as far as full-time starters, including a couple of defensive linemen in Tashawn Bauer, as well as in Devon Gotchow. But you at least get a guy that you didn't have last year that you've had three years before. That is Christian Lakachor, who was a three-year starter from 2013 to 2015, but missed all of last year because of injury. They moved him from defensive tackle to defensive end. The other defensive end, you've got Frank Heron, who can play either position, but right now they got him as a DE. And a defensive tackle, returning starter in Greg Gilmore, who last year had 34 tackles. All three of those guys are seniors. Linebackers saw their fair share of losses as well for the Bayou Bengals, Kendall Beckworth, as well as Duke Riley, both third-round draft picks. But you do have Arden Key. Well, you'll have him as soon as he's healthy. Last year as a sophomore, absolutely kicked butt with 12 sacks. But it's had a couple of uh, whammies to deal with during the offseason. Number one, missed all of spring practice due to personal reasons and has had an injury issue with the shoulder um, an issue that's so severe that we haven't seen him yet partake in full contact drills, and we won't until the doctors clear him. Will it be in time for that season opener against BYU? We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, Arden Key, one effective outside linebacker. The other one is a senior, a veteran in uh, Corey Thompson, who has played in 32 games in his career and has had eight career starts. Inside linebacker, uh, Devin White, who last year as a freshman had 30 tackles. He can run a 4 5 40. And Donnie Alexander, he's a senior, last year had 45 tackles and started the last two games. The secondary also saw their fair share of losses, uh, losing Jamal Adams at a safety and also two in Tredavious White at a corner. We'll begin at the corner position where Dante Jackson. Um, they can rely on him. This guy, he is a junior and also two returns kicks for the Tigers. The other corner, you have a Kevin Tolliver, a junior, who has started uh, seven times. Looking at the safety positions, you got John Battle and Ed Paris. Both are seniors, but don't be surprised if a couple of freshmen, sooner than you might think, work their way into the starting rotation. The number one recruit this past year was Jacoby Stevens out of Tennessee. So he could start as a true freshman. They already like what he's doing. And the other safety position, guy out of Houston, Texas, in Grant Delpit. As far as the special teams, looks like they'll be going with a freshman at place kicker in Connor Culp. And last year, the Australian John Grabben had a 41.4 yard per punt average now entering his sophomore year. Highlighting the schedule for LSU. Well, the season opener, BYU, they're not great, but they are good. So that is a decent opening season matchup. The game will take place at Houston. Third game of the year happens to be the conference opener for the Bayou Bengals against a Mississippi State team that will be better than last season. One thing that sucks if you're an LSU fan, the schedule, you have to play five conference road games and only three SEC games in Baton Rouge. That's because last year, the Florida game was should have taken place at Gainesville. It didn't because of weather. It got shifted to Baton Rouge. So this year's game, which should have taken place at Baton Rouge, now has to take place at Gainesville to make up for last year. So that's a bad break on the LSU schedule. And you got to play at Alabama, which is never easy, early November. The Tigers will try to snap a six-game losing streak against the Tide. 
But you do get two of the final three at home, and you wrap up with A&M, whom LSU has never lost to since the Aggies back in 2012 joined the SEC. Vegas says that LSU will win nine. I will say ditto on that. I'll say nine as well. Yeah, there are some key personnel losses, but they also, too, are still a very talented team. They recruited well, just like they always do. And I think the offensive coordinator position, Matt Canada running that O, I think that will really revive that offense. LSU will win nine, but they're still not on that same level with Alabama. But then again, I don't think anybody is at the moment in the SEC. That's my look at the Tigers. We'll see you next time.